ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Leader. Warning, this episode contains strong language as well as major spoilers for Tailgate Party, episode 7 of the final season of Succession. This week, it's election eve on Succession, and a group of America's most influential players have gathered at Shiv and Tom's before the big day. But of course, this isn't just any social event. Last-minute allegiances are in the works, game-changing details are revealed about Gojo, Kendall's plan to lose the co from his CEO title is revealed, and there is the mother of all arguments involving a scorpion and a snake. Every Tuesday until the final of Succession, we'll be reviewing each episode after it drops on the Leader podcast. Be sure to listen to hear analysis, insight, and general fandom around one of the most talked-about TV series ever. Joining me this week are... I'm Elizabeth Gregory. I'm a culture writer. And I'm Hamish McBain. I'm the deputy editor of ES Magazine. So, first of all, there's Tailgate Party, episode seven of the final season. What happened? So, this week, it's the same crew as usual, but everyone is in New York now, and they are all gathered on the eve of the election at Tom and Schiff's apartment. Lots of important individuals and influential people, political advisors, journalists, businessmen, all meet to kind of like make backroom deals and influence each other um, on the eve of the election so that they kind of have some relationships formed for when the political landscape changes. And so, yeah, everyone's there. Matson shows up and, um, as usual, all the drama kicks off. And obviously lots of stuff happened, but one of the most significant things was about Gojo's numbers. Hamish, can you just tell us what happened there? Well, the numbers are bullshit, basically. <laughs> to, yeah. to cut a long story short, uh, the numbers have been inflated through the opaque prism of India. Matson describes India as wet cement, which I took to mean that basically their numbers are enormously inflated by things that are going on in India that nobody really understands, which is significant if you buy into a company like Waystar Roycal, which is suddenly public interest and the Senate want to know what's going on and the FBI want to know what's going on and they could all be in really, really big trouble if his numbers are fraudulent. So yeah, suddenly this clever idea of Shiv to kind of puppet master Matson, it seems like she's the one who is being played. Do we think this is the sort of final nail in the coffin for the Gojo deal? Is it gonna going to be the beginning of the end for it? I, I certainly do. Yeah, because I think the Gojo deal is 50% cash, 50% stock. So if the stock drops, then it's worth nothing. So and I think Kendall has been wanting to have some sort of proper ammo like this for weeks. And now he has it, he's not going to let it go. I mean, Kendall wants to kill it. We knew that even when he thought it was a genuinely bona fide good deal. So now that he knows it's genuinely not bona fide good deal, he's 100% going to want to destroy it. He's already commandeering Frank to come in as his kind of straight man number two. He said that really sinister line where he said, I love them, but I don't love them or whatever. So he's he's just gone full old school Kendall narcissist. I'm the king of the world. One head, one crown. Yeah, Yeah. one one head, one crown. There you go. uh, He's just got his eyes on... On, on that now. Mm-hmm. You know. And there's also the idea that was floated by Kendall about Waystar actually acquiring Gojo instead. Yeah, Do you think, reverse Viking. Yeah, <laughs> reverse Viking. Reverse Viking. <laughs> <laughs> Will that come off? Yeah, well, that was the original plan, wasn't it? That was their original pitch to Matson. The original pitch was, let's buy you. And Matson was the one who turned it round. But at the end of the day, if the numbers are provably fraudulent, then... It's over. Like the the board will just go. No, we can't do this. Yeah. yeah. Like it's and and then he is really, really, really screwed. Lovely jacket or no lovely jacket? <laughs> yeah. Let's just take a moment for the jacket. Yeah. Can yeah. we just have a moment? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Very good jacket. Yeah. It was very good. Jacket. It upstaged King Charles, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> There's been so many tweets and comments and articles about that jacket. It's already sold out everywhere, I believe. What do you know? What the jacket is? Yeah, Hamish. God, uh, I it's do. needles. Designer. It's needles. It's jacket. Ne- yeah, I, I actually spent more time than. <laughs> Anyone who isn't sad should probably <laughs> spend researching and trying to find out. And it is by a Japanese streetwear brand called Needles, mm-hmm. which 
It's just so great because you can just like, when's he ever going to buy Japanese streetwear? He's obviously just getting sent loads of crap by various people all the time yeah. and just picked it out. But I did read a couple of really cool interviews with Alexander Skarsgård about Lucas Matson's wardrobe. We actually did it in the magazine this week. We've done a piece on how he's a new kind of CEO style icon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he talked about in the Swedish retreat episode, he turned up in his own clothes, just really basic trackies and a, and a crumpled T-shirt, and that he went into the wardrobe, tried five or six different outfits on. And in the end, he said, look, I just think Matson would be wearing what I was wearing. Mm. And so he literally just wore the crap he just turned up yeah. to set on. interesting. And he also said that the jacket, he was like... He needs to drop a golden bomb on this party. <laughs> yeah, because it is, it's more like, you know, flamboyant than he would usually dress. Cause Absolutely. It, yeah, he's, very, he's much more, like, subtle and, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know he's, like, the richest man in the room potentially. What Do you think it's, like, was it was a message? Like, was he trying to... Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He was trying to say... He was trying to throw his weight around and say, like... Look at me. I'm the Gojo boss. Um, I'm coming to your fancy New York party. I don't want to be here. Mm. Um, I also think he was kind of having a joke because he knew that everyone else would be in cocktail and would be in suits and would be taking themselves uber seriously at this party with all these influential people there. And he's like, yo, I'm such a big like cheese that I'm going to show up in this stupid bummer. That's <laughs> and like you're gold. all going to want it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> number one, you're all going to want it. Yeah. And number two, um, everyone's still going to want to work with me and hire me and I'm going to buy their company. I mean, let's so, not forget that he referred to the party in a text to Shivers. Bullshit pre-election, brain-dead, AOL-era, <laughs> legacy media, putrid stuffed mushroom fuckfest. Yeah. <laughs> he basically yeah. turned up and his number two was completely off his face. Yeah, mm. on edibles, he said. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so they turned up to basically just, in a very literal sense rather than tech sense, to disrupt. But Ebba, can we talk about Ebba? Oh, yeah. Like, I love her. I, I love her, but then I'm like, why are you still there, Ebba? Like, <laughs> get out of the situation. Like, <laughs> you've got so much power and you know so much. Like, I know. Why, why maybe she there? should have been the top of the power rankings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, poor old Ebba. It's like... I think she's, like, fantastic. Yeah. I just love her um, exchanges with Matson. What, what did he say? You ha It's like you have tenure just because we mingled, which is such a horrible yeah. word for him to use, <laughs> the fact that they dated. Um, and then she, like, stares at him like with this fury yeah <laughs> but she was also the one who at the end of the day leaked the the india info to kendall yeah mm. um so she's toppled the deal basically assuming that it doesn't go through she is the what the key person he wouldn't have known about that other let's go to the ads stay there to hear our predictions for next week's episode he's by succession creator jesse armstrong as potentially the most shocking one for fans Welcome back. Still with me are the Evening Standards, Elizabeth Gregory and Hamish McBain. Where do you think that this all leaves Shiv then? Because obviously it wasn't a very good episode for her to say the least. I think I still put her at number one in my power rankings this week. Oh, interesting. Just because I still can't see anyone who's more kind of competent than her. And at the moment, I mean, her brother's absolutely not. Jerry's out or says she wants out. And then Matson, as we can see, he's wobbling and potentially bombing out. So I thought Shiv still got it, but I think it's her time's limited now because... Okay, so Tom saw that she was siding with Matson, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And he was there in the room as she was making all of these deals with Matson. So I think that in, in a couple of weeks, Tom's going to turn on Shiv, especially after their fallout, and expose her. And then she's going to... Um, her brothers are going to turn against her. Yeah, that seems very, very feasible indeed, yeah. doesn't it? I did it? wonder why she was like, you know, sharing so much information with him when he's already like betrayed her before. So I don't really understand Well, she's it. playing an incredibly risky game because all these people she knows full well will trample over whoever it takes to get what they want. The, the fact that she's been kind of behind the scenes cheating on her family with Matson is definitely going to come out. And she's just she's going to be a, um, just not aligned to anyone if she's not careful. I, re I really think she's in she's in big trouble. And then you've got the Tom personal stuff. 
I was quite surprised. Were you guys surprised that she didn't tell him that she was pregnant? Yeah. yeah. I, I really felt on the, you know, when it was all coming to a head on the terrace, you know, especially yeah. when he was like saying you, you shouldn't have children and yeah. things like that. I was like, well, there's an ultimate card to play here, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Does that mean it's not his? Potentially, or is it just that she didn't want to reveal it in that moment because of what he'd said to her? Yeah, and apparently um, one of the things that her mum said to her, I think at the wedding, yeah, she said, um, you know, you shouldn't have kids or something along those lines. And I, I think it was some people aren't meant to have children or some, or some people just right. weren't. Like, it was basically saying she's just one of those people that should never have children. Yeah, because so she's so horrible. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, obviously a raw nerve for her already. Exactly. So her mum said it and now her husband said it. And there she is carrying this child. And you could see that that was like, of all of the things that he said, that was the one that actually got to her. Yeah. What do we think of the scorpion present? I, <laughs> well. I, as well, it came in a red box. I was like, oh, Cartier or something. <laughs> and then out came this scorpion thing. But it's tricky because I feel like Tom, for someone like Tom who is not from money, I remember in, in, in the very, very first episode, there's a, he's talking to Shiv about what the hell do I get, Logan? as a birthday gift. And she says, whatever you get him is going to mean an equal amount of nothing. So just something around 50K and that's fine. Yeah. So I think I actually thought that the the scorpion thing was his incredibly misguided and silly way of doing something a bit cute. And because he's he's still got that insecurity around money where he's not born into the kind of wealth that they are. Mm. And, you know, he can't just buy her a Cartier bracelet or whatever, mm. you know. It's just meaningless. Mm. So he's tried to buy something that has a little bit of quirkiness and and meaning to it, but it just was very, very strange. I think that's like being very kind to Tom because I feel like it was like a manipulation or like it was a way to get at her. I know obviously they have a strange relationship, but buying someone a scorpion when it's not an inside joke or anything is literally just being like, this is what reminds me of you. <laughs> like, yes. I, I don't know. I, I just, I think there's like... You know, there was a double meaning behind it. What do you think, Liz? I agree. Yeah. I think it was a kind of quite a vicious thing. Yeah. Give. One thing um, I wanted to talk about is I saw that in an interview, uh, Jesse Armstrong, the succession creator, actually said that one of the most shocking episodes for fans might be episode eight, which will be next week. We know that the title of next week's episode is America Decides. Mm -hmm. Presumably it's the election. What do we think could happen? So I think there's going to be a little surprise with Connor. And I think he's going to do better than we all think, which is which would be so fun to see him. I don't know what position he'd get. I don't think, obviously, he's going to win at all. But wouldn't it be so fun if he does get something? And it would be, I think, very representative of what's going on in American politics at the moment where anyone can come out of nowhere. Well, kind of. If you're a squillionaire. Um, <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> and um, actually um, become a kind of powerful politician. And I, yeah, it was one of my favorite parts in this week's episode that the conversation between him and Willa and Roman about him potentially uh, becoming an ambassador for an area in the world and... I'd love to see more of that kind of dialogue. I, yeah. I agree. I think that he finds himself in in a classic lame politician's position, which mm -hmm. is you're never going to win, but you have somehow clawed together enough influence that you can swing it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very big bartering tool. So I could easily see him ending up with some crazy <laughs> benign but incredibly important office. Because they literally do, you know, in politics, you have offices that don't really mean very much and render that whoever's in them largely ineffectual, but are, you know, big honours. And people get given those offices for exactly this kind of reason. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, vice president, I don't think is out of the yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. And that would actually be lovely to see in the power play between all the different siblings as well, because he's always been kind of... Uh, ignored by the younger sibs and wouldn't it be cool if he actually had some power Yeah, and well, they actually had to take him into consideration and he wasn't like the butt of the joke and the idiot anymore. I, I yeah. think that would be a nice arc for Connor. I can see, I, I think the Connor thing, it needs to be something really, really ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's not going to be that funny or interesting if he gets given, you know, ambassador of 
Somalia um, or whatever. Or whatever was you know, suggested this week, yeah. It's going to be something big and juicy and funny. I'm going to go on record now and say I think he's going to get off at vice president. Succession is available to watch in the UK on Sky Atlantic and now. And that's it from this episode. We'll be back next Tuesday with more Succession Insight. The Leader Podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm. <laughs>